Hello and welcome to another Stephen Mendes video. In this video, we are trying to solve the problem that you can see on your screen. So take a chance to read it, copy it down. If you have it already, then um, we will proceed. As you can see, we have a real world problem involving a traffic light at a railroad crossing and we have two switches in the rails on either side of the crossing a mile away in which are, are used to control the light to prevent uh, vehicles from trying to cross when the train is coming. So it's a pretty straightforward actual problem but what you have to do and what I've been telling all my students to do is to visualize the issue and use diagrams. So here we start now. We draw a little picture of a train approaching the, the junction. We draw the picture of the traffic light, red and green. And uh, the switches are X1 and X2, similar to what we've been using in our asynchronous sequential circuit. Now the train is coming from the left, as you can see. First of all, it activates X1 for a brief amount of time. Then it goes back to zero while the train is between the two. And then finally, the front of the train reaches X2. And as the train goes over X2, X2 becomes one. So we've just written a little table there that summarizes what is actually happening. We start with both X1 and X2, zero, and uh, zero means that we have a green light on the output. The train reaches X1 and passes over it. That activates the light to red. After the train has passed over X1, it goes back to zero, zero, but we want the light to remain red. And then it reaches X2, and uh, X2 becomes a one, but the light must remain a 1 until the coast is clear and X2 reverts back to a 0. So all we have done there in the orange table is to specify what we want to happen, how it's supposed to actually behave. So I've written there in the green what, what is the actual condition. No train. Train coming in from the left. Train between the switches. Train over the X2 switch. Train gone. Now, I don't understand what's the problem. Everybody should be able to do that. So what happens now is that we have to be able to support the same kind of condition from the right side. So here we have the train coming from the right uh, in the other direction along the track. And all that happens is that the switches get activated in the reverse order. First we have X2 becoming a 1 and then going back to a 0 when the train is between the two switches. And then we have X1 becoming a 1 and going back to a 0 when the train passes over the second switch. So the behavior is perfectly identical to the other scenario except that the X2 and the X1 are being triggered in the opposite manner. So once again in the green, we have no train, train coming in from the right, train between the switches, train going over the X1 switch, train gone. So what happens when we put those two tables side by side now? We put those two tables side by side and we observe that we have a problem. What problem do we actually have? Well, when X1 and X2 are 0, 0, we want the output to be either a 0 or a 1. If the train is gone or there is no train, we want the output to be a 0. But when the train is between the switches, we desperately have to have the output a 1. So the very fact that we need the same input conditions to have both a 1 and a 0 on the output signifies that we cannot implement this behavior with one latch or one delay, if you're using the delay mechanism. 
we have to have more than one latch or delay circuit in order to get this kind of behavior. Observe carefully that this device goes through a preset number of states. No train. A train is coming. Train between the switches. Train is leaving. And train is gone. Anything that has that many states can't possibly be implemented with only one latch. Because one latch only has two states. Off or on. Zero or one. So we're going to need two latches to implement the four states shown in this table. So let us now draw the transition table on site. No need for a lot of other complexity. We can go straight to the transition table and the output map because common sense tells us how to do it. How to do it. What you see is, let's first focus on the top, the X1 and the X2 switches. Let's go right up there and uh, focus on that. Now, clearly, when we have zero, zero, either the train is gone or the train is between the switches. When we have zero, one, the train is approaching from one side. When we have one, zero, notice the top up here where it says here, train is coming from the left. But notice that the entire column of 1-1 one, one is lines. There is no such thing as 1-1. One, one. Why is that? Why is there no such thing as 1-1? One, one? Because the train is not long enough to span both switches. And it's important that the train is not long enough to span both switches. And you're told that in the problem. If the train was able to span both switches, we would have a difficulty in implementing this idea. So we can easily put dashes in our 1-1. One, one. Let us go back now to where we have no train until the train arrives. No train until the train arrives. That's a stable state, so we circle it. If the train arrives from the left, the right, or the left, we immediately drop down to the lower row, the next lower row. So whether the train is coming from the left or from the right, we transition to row one in a stable state. Then, when the train moves between the switches, we go back to our not not condition and transition to the next row where we have a stable state. And then when the train reaches the final switch, it doesn't matter which one, we go here or we go around here, we transition to the final row where we have a stable state until finally... Finally, the train completely passes the two switches and the input, let's come up here, the input goes back to zero, zero and a broom, all of a sudden we jump back up to the top where we are at peace. There is no train, the light is green and cars can freely cross the track. Now, to help you understand, I have identified the four states. No train until train arrives. Activate the red light. Train is between the switches. Red light must remain activated. Finally, train leaves the last switch and returns to no train or train gone. 
Isn't it marvelous? Now we go over here and we create our output map. Isn't this exciting? Because people, you don't seem to understand, we can make our output map anything we wish. Anything we wish. We are in control. We are the designers. We are saying how we want our circuit to behave. So when we come to our output map, the only time we want is zero. The only time we want is zero is when we're safe. All these other things, we want the red light to be on. For everything else, the red light must be on. And you will say to me, but why didn't you put ones in everything else? Well, we don't really care in the one-one -one condition because it can never occur. So the correct thing is when you don't know, put an X. But we have also been taught, we have been taught, people, that an X can easily conveniently be grouped with ones. So really and truly, a don't care condition is also a condition to have a one, to have a one. So basically, we have an output map that's filled with ones, except for the one possible condition when it's safe and there's no train or the train is gone. Now, when we have a Carnot map with only one one, uh, sorry, only one zero, what does that mean? That means if we use an R operation on all of the variables, R operation on all of the input variables, the only time that Z will be a zero is when Y1, Y2, X1, and X2 are all zero. Can you see that? Because it's an R. All four will have to be zero in order to get a zero on Z, which is what we are showing here in the table. So that is actually a simple thing from digital one. So we just take all of these things, the Y's and the X's, and we put them into an R gate, and that becomes our output to drive the light, the red and green light. Thanks for watching the Stephen Mendes channel, and we hope that students will now be able to finish this and come up with a working circuit, a working logic diagram, so that I may build it and demonstrate it in a future video. Thanks for watching and see you soon again.